This is the excavation of Broxy Kennels Hill Fort and my name is Kenneth Green. Uh, I'm from Guard Archaeology. We excavated the site between February and uh, the beginning of September of this year. It's um, an Iron Age hill fort called Broxy Kennels. It's um, situated just, uh, just north of Perth on a, a low hill overlooking a large meander in the River Tay. It's um, within an area of agricultural land which um, is now being redeveloped for a road and a bridge over the Tay and uh, it's known as the Cross Tay Link Road project. The site itself was first recorded as crop marks in uh, aerial photographs by um, the Royal Commission I think in the 1960s when they, when they first found that. This is a, a view of the site which I've taken from um, Google Street View which is quite a good view of what, what you would see if you've driven up that way sort of in the past six months or so you would have seen us on on this. It looks like quite a small hill there but it's actually quite a... if you have to climb up and down it five times a day it never gets any easier to be honest. So um, the beginning of our project really was in 2019 when some uh, geophysics was done on the site prior to the to the road being developed and um, they located the uh, they could see the um, the crop marks they could see where some of the ditches were and then this went uh, led on to an evaluation um, still in 2019 where they, they confirmed the presence you can see on the on the slide there they, they confirmed the presence of the ditches all along the north side of the of the hill but they didn't find any you can see all those evaluation trenches around the, the south side of the hill where they didn't find any evidence of the hill fort they thought that it might have been um, sort of quarried away or just uh, sort of ploughed away or something. This is um, two aerial views of the hill fort. These are two drone surveys that were carried out throughout our, uh, throughout our excavations. The one on the left was done in March just after we'd initially stripped it. You can see the ditches to the north and the east. You can see that they are visible but again even in our aerial um, drone survey, you can't really see much of the ditches on the on the south side. But on the right, that was done just in um, just at the end of August, just when we were finishing up. And you can see that we had located all these ditches. You can see the slots that we dug through them. So um, that was done after quite a lot of additional additional machining on the south side. That's a quite a rough site plan. That's um, the site plan that we've created. It's not quite all tied together yet. We're still um, still writing up the site at the moment. But I can tell you that the um, all the brown ditches that you can see there, that's the stuff that was previously known about from the geophysical survey. That's stuff that they found um, sort of from the crop marks, from the geophysics and uh, the evaluation. All the yellow squares in those ditches are the slots that we dug. And then the, on the south, the red and the purple ditches, those are the, the new archaeology that we found essentially, that's the, the ditches that we we discovered. The ditches probably would continue round to the west but that was outside of our evaluation area so that's why they kind of get cut off there because we weren't excavating there, the road's not going to affect them so that's we didn't dig them but they, they do go round that way, they, I'm pretty sure they'll join up somewhere in there. The extra stripping that we did to the south that I was telling you about earlier actually revealed a a whole lot of new features. So this is a just an example of how much we had to had to take down. This is a, a small charcoal rich sort of pit which was found at the bottom of a test pit which was a meter deep at the at the bottom of the slope. We'd already machined off about a meter, meter and a half above that so that's about two and a half meters below the the ground surface that you would have walked on before we'd started uh, stripping there. All of that had to be removed eventually to find uh, more archaeology but that was it was worthwhile because we did find some big pits like you can see here, lots of other stake holes, post holes, lots of other stuff like that. Just go on to the next one quickly. So um, when we excavated the big pit you can see that it was it's pretty sterile, there's not an awful lot in it. Uh, it was probably some kind of storage pit or something but we're not entirely sure of the function of that one yet but there were other other features such as this uh, nice little fire pit that's got plenty of charcoal in it so that'll be really good for dating and uh, 
Some of the other southern features also yielded a small finds assemblage, including um, there was sort of worked flint, there was a part of a polished stone axe came up, so that was quite good, and also some pottery, such as this one. This is a shared of um, grooved ware. It's possibly going to be Bronze Age in dates, so that pushes the, the date of the, the use of the hill fort back a little bit um, and sort of suggests that the, the site might have been in use before it became a hill fort. It might have been a sort of an important site. There wasn't an awful lot of pottery and things came up there though, so. But it's, it's something, it shows that something was happening. So, uh, the site was excavated with a specific sort of research framework and sampling strategy in mind. We employed a whole load of different various forms of sampling, including the normal sort of bulk sampling. Uh, we also did, um, we used Kubiana tins and monoliths, so that can be used for environmental micromorphological uh, sort of research. We also did some multi-element sampling, which is quite good for chemical analysis. We can find out some of that kind of stuff that was happening. And we also used a little bit of optically stimulated luminescence OSL sampling for a, for more soil analysis essentially. And this should hopefully allow us to establish a chronology of the site and um, find out what some of these earlier features were, where they fit in with the chronology of the hill fort and sort of activity in that area in general. Now the, uh, the bulk of the excavation time was spent digging the ditches. You can see in this slide, this is the um, the sort of the ends, the entrance to the to the hill fort. These are the, the terminuses of those main ditches. There was an, an awful lot of material culture that came out of these. We didn't find very much, although in the that bottom left one that you can just see poking out, that's um, ditch one. We did get quite a lot of Iron Age pottery came out from in there. And um, you can also see on the left hand side of that slide, you can see the souterrain that we found that was already known about, but we found that dug into, into ditch two. The, uh, the ditches varied in size across the, across the hill fort and they varied in shape as well. This is a fairly typical section um, through one of the ditches. This one's from ditch one on the south. They tended to measure from maybe about two metres up to six or seven metres wide and um, or yeah and up to six or seven metres wide and the depth was generally from about a metre down to maybe two and a half, three metres in some of the deepest ones. Uh, most of our slots showed evidence of recuts. You can kind of see a recut in that one, which is quite good. And uh, we think it was probably after they have silted up a bit and they've come back and recut them just to sort of re-establish the ditches in the hill fort. This is another example of one of the slots. This was at the bottom of the south side of the hill. You can see it's much different in shape to the previous one. This one's much thinner and narrower and this kind of will tie into our sampling and research strategy a wee bit because um, we're going to try and establish whether these ditches were contemporary with each other, whether they were open at the same time, used at the same time, if they were closed at the same time or if there was different phases of the hill fort and the ditches up at the top maybe went out of use and then these ones at the bottom came into use or the other way around, we don't know. So uh, that would be quite interesting stuff to find out. This is just another quick example of one of the, the slot sections. This one was dug into an area of gravel and it must have kept on subsiding into the back into the ditch every time they dug it because you can see very clearly recuts. You can see in the shape of the, the cut in, into the natural ground there, all these different recuts at the bottom. Uh, some of the bands of gravel that you can see in there, um, it's the same as the kind of natural material around it. And this may be some evidence for ramparts we couldn't find, particularly when we were excavating, ramparts to go with the ditches. But because of the way that this material's obviously been dug out and slid back in, some of this banding may represent uh, ramparts for the ditches. And um, it's possible evidence such as this is one of the reasons why we didn't uh, employed using OSL sampling, as I'd mentioned before, because that's a, a form of sampling where you can date soil essentially without having carbon, it's different from radiocarbon dating so whether we actually use the samples or not I'm not sure at the moment but that might be quite a useful kind of backup to have in terms of dating the site. 
this is an example of what the slots looked like, not in section but in profile, just to describe one of them briefly. Our slots were all four metres wide and uh, if they got any deeper than a, than a metre deep, we'd bring them in and then just dig down the, the, the final two metres in the centre, basically down to the full depth, which made uh, recording the sections was quite awkward, but it was much safer for people that are down at the bottom. It means that these big, if you're three metres below, and you don't want that stuff falling in on top of you. So that's just uh, the way we dug them. And this is a, a wee picture of some of the kind of typical type of pottery that we were getting out. As I said before, we didn't find very much material culture. There wasn't an awful lot coming out of the ditches. But what we did find was this kind of stuff. It's um, probably Iron Age. There wasn't any water logging at the bottom of, the, of any of the ditches to preserve any organic material. There was none of that kind of stuff. Just a few bits of pottery like that. And it kind of tied in with what we were thinking. It's probably an Iron Age hill fort, so that's quite good. Now this is um, one of our master slots, which we dug, as well as the, the normal small slots throughout the, the hill fort ditches. Once they were all completed, we brought a machine back in and dug enormous slots on the south, east and north side of the hill fort. So these, um, these slots were machine dug essentially through the entire hillside, so that gave us a, a really good profile through not just the ditches themselves, but through all the natural, all the build-up of hill wash. And um, it gave us a really good picture of the ditches in relation to each other. And it, um, it allowed us to target sampling so that we knew exactly what we were, what we were looking for. If we were looking for uh, things like trying to look for evidence of the banks, we could target because we could see the whole profile of the hill. We knew exactly what we were, what we were going for. So that was very useful for the optically stimulated luminescence. Uh, dating that we were sampling that we were doing. These slots measured, uh, they were around six or seven metres wide and um, generally about two to three metres deep and the three of them were all more than 30 metres long. They were about 31, 32 metres long usually. You can see that one started filling up with water at the bottom when it started to rain. And that's an example of a one of the ditches in the master slot. So you can see how useful that is because you can really clearly see the cut of the ditch. Uh, you can really clearly see the shape of the ditch. Previously it had been difficult for us digging some of the, the hand dug slots to tell exactly when we'd finished digging fill of a ditch. And then if we were digging into natural, the bands of clay, the hill wash that had built up, a lot of that looked the same as the fill of the ditch. So we were having difficulty once or twice sort of knowing that we'd come to the edge of a, of a slot in a ditch. But when we did these big slots there, you could see everything really clearly. And um, they basically confirmed we were more or less correct the whole way through. So that was quite good. And uh, you can see in this one as well, the excellent sort of ankle breaker at the bottom of the ditch, the shape of that where it just gets really narrow at the bottom. The machine didn't even get to the bottom, but we had to hand dig that wee bottom bit out. And that was quite good. And then, uh, Another example of some of the, the sampling that we've done, these uh, Kubiana tins. This slot was located in an area where um, a cut and a recut from the end of one of the ditches slightly diverged from each other. So we put these Kubiana tins in just to, um, along the interface between the cut and the recut to try and uh, establish when in the, in the chronology of the hill fort this might have occurred. So that's just a more example of the kind of sampling that we were carrying out on site. In the uh, interior of the, the hill fort, there were a number of features that we'd found in the middle. This is a, an example of some of the, the post holes that we got that were very nice post holes, but we didn't find any real structures. There weren't any sort of circular shapes of post holes. There were just wee runs of four or five like that, and then there would be a gap and nothing, and then there would maybe be a few more. So. Uh, it's likely that um, some of these structures, some of these features probably do represent structures that were in, in the hill fort, but um, we're not exactly sure. They've, they've maybe been ploughed away or, or lost in some way. There was very little material culture came out of the, the, the features within the hill fort as well. And um, 
you know, there, there wasn't, not enough of them survived to determine exactly what kind of structures there were. But uh, hopefully some of the, the sort of sampling again that we've been doing will help to work out exactly when these features were there, if they're contemporary with the ditches, that kind of information. However, we found this souterrane, which uh, it was previously known about, as I mentioned, it was seen in the aerial photos. It's, um, it measured around about 11 metres long. It was about four metres wide and up to about a metre deep. And it was constructed of two to three courses of large cobbles. There was big boulders at the bottom and then sort of large cobbles on top and the stones were getting a wee bit smaller as they went up. And it's this kind of, you can see it's a sort of roughly kidney shape and there was a kind of ramp or stairs almost at the, at the tip end to get down into it. I don't know whether there was another course at the top that we've maybe lost, it's, it's difficult to say at the moment. So here's a, another picture of it just when we'd kind of started to excavate it. The souterrain is likely to date to the 1st or 2nd century AD, so that's an Iron Age, but it definitely post-dates the hill fort because it was the, the souterrain was cut into the, the fill of one of the ditches. We um, excavated it initially with a, a slot over the main chamber and then another slot over the kind of entrance ramp and then we put in this long section so we had a section the whole way through the entire souterrain so we could see what was happening in there. All the material that we dug out of there was sieved and we found next to nothing in it except for charcoal. However, the, uh, the base of the souterrain, the kind of floor deposits, we, um, we did a, a multi-element sampling across that. So this um, type of sampling allows you to carry out chemical analysis and determine if particular processes, activities have been carried out. Uh, we put a, a grid, essentially a string grid, 20 centimetres square, across the bottom and then each grid has its own sample taken, soil sample. And uh, in this photograph you can see the, see the people that are actually sampling the material at the bottom and then in the background the grid's being surveyed in with a, a sub-centimetre GPS so we know exactly where each grid square is. And then these samples can be analysed for different chemical elements which um, will allow us to find out exactly what hopefully was going on in different areas and we can pinpoint exactly what was happening within the, uh, within the souterrain. Once it was all excavated, the souterrain, we had to number every single stone. The numbers were then all planned again and photographed and recorded. And then the final task on site, just about, it was, I think this was maybe the last day, was dismantling the souterrain. We started by hand, the guys were trying to help them out by hand, but obviously, as I said, some of them were enormous, so we did eventually get a, get a machine in to help us with slings and lift them out. They were all uh, stacked on pallets and wrapped up, and they should uh, hopefully be reconstructed at some point. I'm not sure whether they're going to reconstruct the souterrain or if they're going to do something a bit more arty with it, I'm not sure at the moment. But um, it has all been labelled and numbered, so it's available to be reconstructed. Hopefully, as part of the Cross Tail Link Road project, this will happen. I don't know when or where it's going to happen, but they said that that's what they were going to do. Once the stones were all out, that's it. Empty souterrain. It was just a, a sandy hole in the ground, essentially. And uh, that, that was all that was left of it after all that excavating. So... Uh, this was basically just a, a quick summary of some of what we'd found during the, the Broxy Kennels Hill Fort excavation. The post-excavation work is just starting just now, so uh, I don't have much else to say about it at the moment, but hopefully we'll have something else in the future in the next few months. And that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>